What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Scene Snobs Reviews. And this is a true Scene Snobs Reviews because we have both the Scene Snobs here. In fact, Casey, we are both here. We are. Casey, the Man Man Plot, is here for a new format movie review show that we are doing. Casey, welcome, my friend. I'm so glad that you are joining me on this escapade of movie reviews. Well, thank you, my friend. It's a pleasure to be along this trek with you as we begin an entirely new format. Yeah. So, guys, the way it's going to work, as you know, uh, I've always been doing the movie reviews, just talking head, talking to you guys into the camera and telling you what I thought. But what I really want to do, uh, Casey doesn't always get to go out and see the movies as quickly as I do. Yeah. And we thought it might be fun for me to go see the movies and then review them to Casey and to you guys and then see if we can convince Casey to see it or not. So we'll go from there. And maybe you guys can join in so always make sure you join in in the comments and things like that and let us know what you think of everything sounds like a very tall order but we'll see if we're able to uh convince me and sway me to go see this either in the theater to wait until it comes out onto a streaming service which is probably where i would most likely t tend to sit uh if it's red box worthy meaning i'm desperate <laughs> or it's uh there's nothing it's not ever to go uh with these reviews what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the premise, tell them what the movie's about. Then I'm going to give my review. I'm going to give my rating of the movie. And then, of course, Casey's going to ask some questions about it. And then we may be getting into some theories and things like that. These are going to be spoilers. We are going to go whole hog into it and let them know because Casey doesn't mind. And if you guys have seen it, it might be nice to talk about some of the Easter eggs and things like that along the way. So if you're ready, Case, I will start my review. I am prepared. <laughs> All right, here we go. So Morbius, the 2022 film that is connected to the Spider-Man man universe but we don't know quite how yet it is about dr michael morbius who grows up with a rare blood disorder that leaves him almost crippled in a way where he can barely walk and his body is very distorted he grows up with his best friend milo ever since they were children both suffering from this disorder all the way into adulthood he became a doctor to cure this disease and along the way he thought vampire bats might be the way to do it. But it takes a turn in his scientific experiments and they start to turn him into a vampire himself. And he starts to drink blood as it would be and we can't quite get a, a whole level on him is he a hero is he not the hero once you see the movie you'll see how it kind of turns out this is of course the character that was spawned from spider-man comics and has kind of grown from there you may be familiar with him uh from the from spider-man comics from blade comics or maybe from the spider-man animated tv series from the 90s but that is morbius in a nutshell casey what do you think about that so far <laughs> well i mean so far it sounds interesting i mean you've got me i like vampires so I'm an easy sell there. Uh, I do know the lead role is Jared Leto, and I yes. do like him acting. He's he's one of them good actors, so I I believe in the guy. Uh, so I'd be interested to check this one out. Uh, exactly, though, I'm not sure how I feel. Is it worth going to the theater yet? I'm not convinced beyond that yet. Yeah. Well, I won you over. Of... And you being a comic book guy, I knew I would kind of win you over. You love the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. I knew you might go see it. I am a mark for the Marvel movies. This is very true. I, I'm a pretty easy one, too. <laughs> Yeah, I did not know if you're going to be able to go see it in theaters uh, or you wanted to at that point. Uh, because there's been a lot of, uh, you know, things about it that have just kind of been, you know, very negative. And there's been a lot of backlash about, like, what goes on in the movie, some misleading things here and there, some controversies. But uh, overall, my review of this movie is I really enjoyed it. I walked in there and I said, okay, if it's not connected to Spider-Man in any way, if they completely carved that out, I'm okay with that. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to look at this movie as a movie is it have a clear concise three-act story structure uh is it you know is the visual are the visual effects good is it shot well is the acting done well and yeah i mean you, it's hard to not have a well-acted movie when the stars of the movie are jared leto matt smith and jared harris oh wow Oh my you know, goodness. Those are three uh, three mega powers in the acting community. And all of them together really added a lot of flavor to this and, and a really uh, good spin on this character. I know. I know about, I knew about from the comic books and I knew about, of course, from the animated series, but this is kind of a different take. Uh, and I, but I did enjoy it overall. And the thing I liked about it the most is the look was really fun. The fight scenes were good. I would, I do have a couple of things about the visual effects during the fight scenes. Okay. I love the visual effects and the makeup effects of the faces. 
I thought they did a great job, but it, they didn't hold up well during the fight scenes in the air. Okay. But on the ground, everything looked really good. But this was a good story about two friends who grew up with this debilitating disease that is going to kill them at an early age, uh, desperate to change it. And once it does get changed, it puts them at odds. And it really played out very well. And I liked the whole Jekyll and Hyde aspect of Dr. Morbius and like what he's going through and he's being investigated. And is he doing these killings or is it somebody else? Uh, it was just a lot of fun and I and I really enjoyed this movie and I thought it was really well. And to give you for my review, to give you some spoilers Yes. It is connected to Spider-Man. Okay. Here's the thing. We don't know how yet. Okay. We don't know which Spider-Man or where it's going from. But if you remember in the trailer, you saw a picture of Spider-Man. You saw uh, a newspaper that said Black Cat and Rhino. Mm -hmm. And it was the Daily Bugle uh, and a few other things. And you knew that uh, Adrian Toomes, played by Michael Keaton from... Uh, Homecoming was in it, but you didn't know how it was going to kind of play out into this whole aspect. Well, I will tell you how it's connected. Uh, the Daily Bugle is still very much the paper. With J. Jonah Jameson? Well, you don't see J. Jonah Jameson, Ooh. but it is the Daily Bugle newspaper. All right. So right there, that tells me it's not in the MCU. Yeah, that's fair. That's an instant sell for me, by the way. If if it had been even a 20-second blip, five seconds of J.K. as uh, J.K. Simmons, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> well, he's not in the movie, I will tell you that. Uh, okay. The only person we see from the movie, from the MCU, is Adrian Tumas, Michael Keaton's character, the Vulture. But you do see... There's a little snippet on that newspaper that says Chameleon's Great Escape. Now, we know that, and we'll get to this in the theories portion, but we know Chameleon's going to be in Craven. And we know Craven, Venom, and now Morbius are all connected into that universe. And Vulture has been brought into it. Uh, again, once we get to the theory side, I'll talk more about the end credit scene. But Vulture does show up. It is because of the events of No Way Home. Mm -hmm. and, the, and you don't get it. But, you know, a lot of people are complaining about it. That's not how the spell worked. That's not how this worked. You know, we have haven't seen multiverse of madness yet they say that the multiverse is something we know frightening little about so he could have ended up there for some reason that will be explained at a later time right and he never says peter parker he says i don't know why i'm here but i have a feeling it has something to do with spider-man well because he's going to take that to the grave or at least until he can find peter you have this man who knew who peter parker was and you knew peter parker spider-man now he's in a different universe and they're all going to go after spider-man yeah because he doesn't know who peter parker is anymore like yeah. now they've got a whole new Sinister Six in a way. And I have a very, sh and those wings that he's using looks very similar to the ones from the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, yeah. You know, when they're up on the mounted on the wall. So I have a very strong feeling he is going to go after Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. And he doesn't know who Peter Parker is, so it's just going to be about Spider-Man. And it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. That'll be a lot of fun because it's it's where they need to go. I was very happy after No Way Home because they're getting it back to Spider-Man. It's not all everybody knowing about Peter Parker. It's it's hard, too, and it makes it even more of a challenge for him to overcome. So it's very exciting. Yeah, and so my, my rating for this movie, of course, I normally do it out of five. I'm going to say four out of five bloodsuckers. Ooh, Put those little Dracula fangs down there. It's yeah. four out of five. I did really enjoy this coming away from it. I thought it was well acted. I thought it was a well told story. I didn't rely heavily on the Spider Man stuff, but they gave me just enough where I'm like, okay, I want to see more down the line and see where this goes. Okay. But case, it is now yeah. time to start the questions portion. <clears throat> I want to know what you want to know. All right, buddy. Well, I've got a few things I'm curious on. Um, firstly, how was the directing? You've got these three major stars, these three massive powerhouses whom I love and would love to see on the big screen. They're selling points. But how are they used? To the best of their abilities, do you feel like there's more in them? Did they Were they directed properly? Did it come across? I do truly believe that they were directed properly. I really enjoyed the connection between each character. Um, you know... Tyrese Gibson plays one of the FBI agents in it, and I, I didn't get a big feel for him in it, okay. but I thought he did a good job. And they're okay. setting, I think, him up for something bigger in the future. Adria Arjona played uh, Martine Bancroft in the movie, um, which she has a very big role as a doctor who helps Morbius in his scientific experiments. And she did a great job. They, they played well off of each other. Okay. Um, but the big thing was, I like Jared Harris. He was a very cool uh, father figure, and it played well. He and to both uh, the Milo character played by Matt Smith, mm -hmm. and to the uh, Morbius character played by Jared Leto. But the thing that really shined for me was the relationship between Morbius and Milo. Okay, because it starts out as kids. We get to see them growing. We get to see Morbius has become uh, not just like so huge on trying to cure this for himself, but 
to help Milo because he made a promise to him as a kid. And he's got such a like a, a strong intelligence that he's like as a kid is like thrown right into becoming a doctor, you know, okay. and trying to do this stuff. As they get older, they they really shine that well. So I have to give a lot of credit to the direction there is because like they go on a walk and they're talking to each other and they're sitting in a park. And those little things uh, that have to do with friendship and kind of play it out, I think really shine because then by the end, you are feeling bad for both sides because mm-hmm. they do really care about each other. So I, well, I that's thought good. the direction that's important. I, I like having that dynamic villain too. That's important. I, I don't like cardboard villain yeah no no i thought the i thought matt smith as a villain was really well played here awesome well i would hope he's matt smith so i really hope for you know nothing but the best from the man i don't know Um, i've seen uh terminator genesis so let's just (laughs) that's fair let's just skate right along past that (laughs) (laughs) what else you got for me my friend uh i was also curious about were there any parts of the movie that really took it took you out of was there anything that made you kind of go hmm didn't need that again i would say most some of the visual effects fights especially when they're like airborne visual effects uh, fighting uh it kind of it just kind of took me out like uh one thing that i would do you remember matrix uh was a revolution second one Mm -hmm. when all those agent smiths come in it seemed very animated yeah there were shots it wasn't like that and the whole thing wasn't like that but there were shots where it was like, mm, this seems like really animated. And it kind of took me out of it because I did like the the echo uh, sonar that he had. And I okay. liked how like he flew and he moved because he wasn't really flying. He could go with the current. Right. Like he would fly to one building and then jump and then fly to another. And I really liked how they played that up. Uh, That's pretty neat. The, okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So it sounds to me like that is something I would definitely find worthwhile. Like, would and then, you go to the theater? Uh, one more question, though. One more question. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. So no. So none of the acting took you out of it, though. More. More to the point, it was the effects. It was really just more dating. Yeah, and it, it didn't take me out too much. I really wasn't taken out of this movie a lot. In fact, I'm kind of glad that it was toned down on the Spider-Man stuff because me being able to shut down and hearing all of those rumors about like, oh, they completely cut out all the Spider-Man stuff. I was like, all right, then I'm just going to go shoot, sh- watch this as a movie. I'm not going to rely on like, oh, how's it connected to the MCU and this, that, right. This was literally me sitting down and saying, how is this as a movie? And I think that really helped things because I do think it's a good movie. Okay. And with everything else out right now, if my other choice was to see Uncharted, which uh, would you recommend against? Would you say uh, I should go see this instead? Well, it's funny because I'm going to tell everybody to go check out my Uncharted review. But I will say, and because I did really like that movie. Mm-hmm. I would say it's what you're in the mood for. This is an okay. in the mood for situation. If you're into something darker that's a little more horror related, check this out. Okay, well then I'm sold. I will go to the movies to see this movie. Oh my god, I, I have to go get that. you go. I will do it. I will yes. go. I, I'm not I'm not necessarily buying the tickets right this moment, but I'm jazzed enough that yes, I will go see this on a Monday afternoon. I do I I, I hope against hope that they can connect this to the mcu in some way so that way we can see morbius go up against blade Mm -hmm. yeah oh god that would be amazing it would be but if we don't i'm okay with it too but you know i I would love to but that actually is a great segue into our last portion which is theories A, a very cool thing about this is at the end of the movie we see the sky open up and then we see in the mid credits, uh, Adrian Tumas end up in a jail cell, and then they realize he's not on the right world. So they talk about like, oh, he's going to uh, not be resentenced. He's going to a trial, and he's probably going to be let go because they don't know who he is. Yeah. So, and then after that, he shows up in a vulture suit, a variation. It's not the same one, and it's not the same wings. And he shows up to meet Morbius and say, "I'm putting a team together because I have a feeling, up, you know, I'm here for a reason." I think Spider-Man has something to do with it. So I'm putting a team together to go after him. And all Morbius says is interesting. So we're going to get our Sinister Six. Now, my yeah. theory on that was that's the reason No Way Home had five. Mm-hmm. I think Sony has always been hard up on wanting to do a Sinister Six movie. Right. That they were like, listen, you can have five. You're not doing six. We want six. And, that, and now the MCU is helping them get to their six, probably with Andrew Garfield. Yeah, and that's what I'm hoping is to have that in the Andrew Garfield world. I think that would be wonderful. And I think they're I I think they kept Andrew Garfield out because if you keep him out, and it makes sense too, because again, if the sky opens up and then you get Adrian Tumas, because it did have like the 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 break in the sky. Okay, the same purple just, line and everything. Yeah. So it had the same one when he showed up, and he showed up just like they all disappeared. 
mm-hmm. you know, with okay. a light yeah. shining. So there's a reason in New York while Morbius is supposedly killing people, but we find out it's actually Milo. It makes sense that Spider-Man wouldn't show up to try and stop it because he wasn't there. Right. Because all this happens is within a few weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, so that makes sense that, yeah, Andrew Garfield's been on this other place. Yeah. So why would you have Spider-Man? And it also makes sense because Venom is connected. He mm-hmm. does do the I am Venom line. Uh, it's a little bit different than you see in the in the commercials, but uh, Venom does exist because they also talk about the thing that happened in San Francisco and this, that, and the other thing. Okay. But a lot of people are like, well, how does Venom exist in Andrew Garfield's world and there's no connection? Because he's, if it's Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, he's not Tom Holland. He is the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He hasn't been to space. He hasn't been all over fighting in Germany and this, that, and the other thing with the Avengers. It's just him in New York. Why would he go all the way to San Francisco to fight venom yeah he, he that's not the kind of world he lives in and also he's not he is friendly neighborhood but he's also a little more hard edge yeah. remember he's the one who said he you know after gwen he stopped pulling his punch yeah so. and that's going to be an interesting take to see where it goes there and i think that's going to lead the venom it makes more sense to me in theory wise why the venom scene played out the way it did in no way home Mm-hmm. It leaves the symbiote there, so you can yep. set it up in the MCU. But it takes him right back out. Now he goes back to the world, and he's probably going to look and say, "Is there a Spider-Man in our world?" Yeah, and that's what leads him to New York. And that teams him up as the lethal protector. Yep. It's going to be awesome because then we get the fight with him and Spider-Man, and maybe a, a, a uh, Andrew Garfield getting a symbiote. Wouldn't that be rad? That would be fantastic. I mean, and and you know, he talked about he wants to fight an alien, but although if he doesn't get the symbiote, he still fights an alien in Venom. Yeah, exactly. They're going to fight because he gets his fight with an alien and he can go back and say, and I, I, I hope against alien. hope that it all comes together and we get the King and Black series. Yeah, that would be cool. But if we don't, we could do an Absolute Carnage series, too, like a movie of Absolute Carnage, where even if it's just Andrew Garfield's uh, Spider-Man has to to fight in some way, because whatever happened to Cletus uh, Cassidy in that movie, you don't need him, technically, because Absolute Carnage proves that. Right, yeah. I mean, it can just go to someone else. Or you could even get Scream in there, or one of the other symbiotes. I mean, there's tons of symbiotes. Once you have one piece, it just hops off and becomes something else and joins whomever it joins. It would be so good. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think the, the I think our theories are lead to something that could be a lot of fun. We could probably get another amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. I really hope because he was just a lot of fun. He was great. I loved him. And I it was hard watching him. The the end, man, we lo- we sat had him lose Gwen Stacy and then didn't get any sort of retribution. We got no return. Just yeah. that little throwing in the rhino in the next part. And it was like, eh. Oh, I, I don't think that more. was I, I love that movie. scene. No, I, I love the scene. But with that being the, the, the thing yeah. that I was left with, it was a bad taste. It was like after a while because it was so yeah. sweet, like a promise of tomorrow and something great. And then we wind up with nothing. We got nothing. We got shafted. Andrew Garfield deserved better. I I really dug his Spider Man. I, I I do agree with you, and I think that we're going to get more. I mean, there's no way with the success of No Way Home and now this being connected to have Venom, to have Morbius, to have Craven coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you can't do Craven and not do Craven's Last Hunt, and like right. he's like goes after Spider Man because even Craven's Last Hunt, he does he can go after Andrew Garfield's Spider Man, and he doesn't even have to really be in the movie. I mean, I feel like wouldn't it be cooler if Craven went after Toby Maguire? <laughs> we had to have that. Well, no, he Craven is connected to whatever world this is connected. Oh, to okay, gotcha. In those movies, so yes, it could be Toby Maguire. We don't know anything yet, but I have a feeling it's probably going to be Andrew Garfield because I think mm-hmm. he'll be more readily available to. Yeah, that's fair. And you're not going to get a fake butt in uh, in those spandex. I mean, you really <laughs> can, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my review of Morbius. And I think, you know, you said I convinced you you're going to go check it out in theaters. I can't wait to hear what you have to think about it. And what Absolutely, you're man. That's going to be happening this week. I'm very excited. You you really sold me on it because I was I was on the fence. I was on the fence. I wasn't I didn't see myself going into the theaters. But yeah, it sounds worthwhile. I think I truly think if you enter it and you just say, I'm going to see this as a movie as a movie. Yeah. And plus, yeah. it sounds dark enough and I'm interested in a good murder mystery. So let's yeah. go with it. And the makeup effects are cool. So let me know what you think on those, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, everybody. Well, uh, we are the Scene Snobs. This is the Scene Snobs Reviews. We're going to try and do these more often. Where When we go see it, I try to convince KC to co- go and see the movie. Or not go and see the movie, depending on what it is. Uh, but you can check out all of our other reviews. Our show, the Scene Snobs Podcast, we host every week, Tuesday night, live at 9 p.m. Uh, and we have such a great time doing it. It's so much fun. 
Uh, so join us there. We also host Geek Fest Live every Sunday and tons more. So just go check out the YouTube channel. Go check us out on any podcast platform uh, and follow, rate, review, like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Go to the scenesnaps.com for links for everything. Case, thank you for joining me, my friend. Thank you, my friend. It was a fantastic show. And until next time, my friends, be kind to yourselves and be kind to each other. I can't finish it any better myself, so I'll just say have a good night. Thanks for watching and listening, everybody. I'm the Scene Snob, Mick Manhattan. You can check out the Scene Snobs podcast live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel or all podcast platforms afterwards. Also on our YouTube channel, you can check out great shows like Real Combat, the ultimate debate show for movie lovers, Mixed Movie Picks with new recommendations every week, Geek Fest Live every Sunday night, and new movie reviews and news all the time. Like and subscribe, then hit the notification bell so you know when all of our new episodes drop. Thank you so much to all of our amazing Patreon supporters. We with whom this would not be possible. They help keep the lights on and support us in such big ways. If you would like to become a supporter on our Patreon and take advantage of all the perks like monthly giveaways, early access, and so much more, head on over to the Scene Snobs Patreon page and just sign up on one of our two tiers. Join our awesome community of geeks, movie lovers, and so much more and join up on our Discord. The Scene Snobs Discord is now live and you can head over to thescenesnobs.com for links to there and more. The Scene Snobs merch store is now open with original fun designs that are available on all all different types of merch and apparel. Check out the scenesnobsmerch.com. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media accounts like TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and so many more. We have fun updates, topics, we talk about collectibles, and so much more on there. It's a great time. You can find all of our links to everything on the scenesnobs.com or on our link tree, which are down in the descriptions below. Thanks again, everyone. Stay tuned and stay geeky.